Welcome. Um, this presentation is part of a curriculum that's been developed collaboratively by the partners you see on the screen through a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The primary partner is the Digital Public Library of America, and then you'll see some of the DPLA hubs listed below there as well. And we encourage you to share this presentation, reuse it, adapt it for your own needs. My name is Carla Urban, and I work with the Minnesota Digital Library, and I am pleased to present to you this training module on selecting content for a digitization project. Our assumption is that this is for sort of novices to digitization, so um, here we go. If you attended the first um, module on why digitize, you um, probably thought through some project management ideas like um, what are our, why are we doing this, what are our objectives and goals, and those things are very important to keep in mind as you move forward with selecting content for your project. If you have defined very clearly a scope for your project, your content selection will be much more straightforward. It will help you identify appropriate items to include in your project as well as giving you the grounds to exclude inappropriate ones. Um, you may be working independently or you might be working with partners on a project and um, there will be parameters that you should keep in mind as you are selecting content. The parameters might be determined by certain considerations typical to project management such as money. Um, <laughs> be aware that there are costs associated with gathering, scanning, and describing each item. So you'll want to figure out how many items you'll be able to do to include in your project related to the funds and time that are available to you. <clears throat> A project might have time constraints or deadlines and you want to right size your content to fit within those constraints as well. Um, if you're new to digitization, you might not have a sense of how long the various steps will take. So you might consider a small pilot project that will help you gather that kind of data before you jump into a big project with the risks of overruns or non-completion. And as a cataloger by trade, I would note that it is really important to account for the time you will need to describe the content. People think of digitization projects um, with an emphasis on the actual scanning, but the description, the creation of metadata of the items often takes longer per item than the actual scanning. So you want to be sure you include that in your calculations. So be clear about what your project entails, be realistic about the scale of your project, and don't bite off more than you can chew. You want to set yourself more than you can chew. Excuse me. You want to set yourself up for success. Um, another item, I guess, I should mention is that you, or your partners or your scanning center may have other customers or projects that they're also working on. So you need to put your project in the larger context um, of other priorities or projects, uh, which could affect the size and timing. Another piece to keep in mind is staffing. Is this all going to be on your plate? Are multiple people going to be involved? Are different people going to be responsible for different parts of the project? Um, and so if there are multiple people involved, that brings up issues of workflow and how materials and responsibilities are transferred from one step to the next. So you'll need to think about how those parts fit together, how you're going to track that flow, keep track of what's happening where, how the timing will work, and figure that all out before you commit to digitizing big chunks of material. So it's tempting to say, hey, we got permission to do a project, and hey, we've got some equipment, let's get going. You need to step back and do some thinking and some analysis and some planning before you get started uh, so that you don't get overwhelmed. So now we're going to move into more sort of tangible criteria in related to selecting materials for your project. Um, one of the first ones to think about as you are looking at the wide array of materials out there are uh, thinking about each item, how original is this, how unique is this, how close to the original is maybe a better way of saying it. Um, as items are reproduced, especially images, quality is lost. So for example, you would prefer an original photograph rather than a copy of that photograph that was printed in a newspaper. Quality is lost as it goes. 
down the line. You would prefer to digitize an original letter rather than a photocopy of the letter. So that's um, how you, your selection preference should lean towards the original end of the spectrum. Another element that's closely related is unique. And the evaluation of uniqueness is not entirely straightforward as um, if you think of a photo, a photographer may have printed multiple copies of that photo. Publishers make multiple copies of a book or a postcard. So those things are not unique in the whole world. But you want to evaluate the uniqueness of the item in the current context. Um, is this an unusual image? Um, are there very few copies of this postcard out there? Um, does the postcard also include some interesting text on the back that, of, you know, somebody's handwritten letter, which indeed makes it very unique? Um, are there, if it's an image that I, for example, had a project where they submitted some pictures of a newly built building and there were five versions of the same shot, the same angle that were very similar, I'm not going to want to digitize all five of those images, even though they took them all together, I'm going to choose one of those images to be as unique as possible and to prioritize for my collection. Um, I say here to be wary of newspaper clippings, and I have a nice image there uh, of a scrapbook page from the New York Public Library. News, uh, uh, organizations are often very proud of things like scrapbooks that contain clippings like this, or even uh, clipping files where they gathered information from their community newspaper about local businesses or something. And they could, they can be very rich in information, very interesting resources. But from um, the, con the perspective of the digitization project, they can also be quite troublesome and they might not be something that you choose to do for um, one of your first projects because they have, these articles have been taken out of the context of their original publication and they have really complicated rights issues. Um, the publisher owns the copyright for that newspaper and just because you have a copy of the article pasted onto a page or tucked into a folder doesn't take it out of that larger copyright context. So be very wary of them, only go in that direction when you feel you're ready to address those rights issues which are talked about in another module of this training. Tied in pretty closely with the unique and original issue is um, you want to use your resources wisely. You don't want to spend your time and effort and money digitizing something that's already been digitized. So you might collect a um, variety of materials with a provisional um, idea that we will digitize these if they haven't already been digitized. Um, an institution might feel, well, my copy is wonderful. I really want my copy digitized. You need to communicate clearly with them in advance that we will digitize this if it hasn't already been done. So um, these are pictured on the screen. Some of the places that you would go to check, particularly for published materials, um, whether they have been previously scanned so that you can um, not duplicate effort. There are some exceptions that you might find um, to that rule of not doing something that's previously been scanned. Um, in some of the rapid scan projects like Google Books, where much of their output wound up in Hathi Trust as well, foldouts were not scanned in the original books or there might have been some quality issues. So you might choose to fill those gaps or to make a considered decision to make a better quality copy available to digitally, but that would be um, something to think about carefully. Uh, in the project that I was recently involved with, there were annual reports from the Minneapolis Park Board um, that were held widely in multiple physical libraries around the country, um, but digitally, a number of those annual reports were available in Hathi Trust. We chose to digitize the reports that had not been scanned, so we, we filled gaps, and we chose to digitize the foldouts from reports that had not been scanned. So we were making a selected um, choice to digitize stuff that would fill gaps that were existent. Um, but again, if this is a first project for you, that might be a little bit more effort or detail than um, is 
wise for a priority, but that's, that's a choice that you can evaluate. But being clear about your criteria when you're communicating with your partners, your contributors early on is important so that you're managing their expectations about what you will digitize. And also having decided who's responsible for doing that search. Um, if, if you're getting materials from partner contributors, are they responsible for searching these places to determine whether something's been digitized already? Or are you going to take that responsibility so that you are maybe more certain that all of the appropriate places have been checked before you go ahead and spend the resources? So that's something to think about in your staff responsibility. Another criteria to pay attention to is the physical format of the materials and size. You um, need to know what your scanning center is equipped to digitize. Are your scanners, could they handle large poster-sized materials? Can they handle framed portraits? Does it have to be flat? Can they do text as well as um, images? How about three-dimensional objects? Uh, are you able to digitize audio recordings or video recordings? So obviously those are going to be, if, if there are parameters there based on your scanning center, um, then you'd know clearly what you could include or exclude based on physical format. But your project might place a, prior, a higher priority on one format over another or a group of formats over others just based on the objectives and intent of your project scope again. See how I return to that project scope? It's really important. Um, it might be that your um, project has a storytelling objective and for that you want to create some online exhibitions and you really would rather have more images than text and so that would be a preference for this particular project that would impact your selection. There are also some practical elements that might be involved. Um, if you have materials that are handwritten, so there are issues then about transcribing that. Um, handwritten objects digitized are not, you can't do OCR, optical character recognition, so they are not keyword searchable unless you add a transcription to it, um, as well as the fact that a lot of people nowadays can't read the old-fashioned cursive handwriting. So if you've got a diary or letters or postcards or um, ledgers or such that are handwritten, the extra time and expense and effort of transcribing them is a pretty important piece. Are you prepared to handle that in your project or not? Same thing with audio or video items. Do you need to um, do transcription of that as well so that the content is searchable? Let me check my notes here. Oh, and also, um, you might be thinking very broadly about your formats when you're speaking to potential contributors, but they might not always um, fully understand. So for example, if you say we're really interested in images, um, you might need to specify that images is a pretty broad def definition. It's not just photographs. It also includes slides, posters, postcards, negatives, stereographs, um, glass, lantern slides, drawings. So you might need to get a little bit more specific on if there are subcategories sub within images that you are interested in particularly or can't handle. Quality is an important criteria to pay attention to as you are doing your content selection. Um, a lot of times people will come to a digitization project uh, excited about scanning their damaged or fragile materials. Um, these are the things that they know are in um, a precarious place uh, and physical access to the items increases wear and tear and they would like to have them digitized as sort of a preservation um, approach. Preser or scanning can be part of a preservation strategy. It does reduce the wear and tear on the original, but the scanning process itself can add some um, risk of damage. And so that risk should be evaluated as part of your selection process. And it should be noted that scanning is not a replacement for preservation of the physical item. So as you are thinking about your project, um, is, are you prepared to handle fragile or brittle materials? Is that a priority for you? Um, 
is it really going to take so much more time and effort that it will suck up your resources and not let you um, get to the bulk of the material that would be uh, even more appropriate for your project's objectives. So your selection criteria should assess not just the physical, um, the physical mm, characteristics of the item, but whether the content of the digitized item will be useful and meaningful. So just because it's fragile doesn't put it to the top of your priority list, but what about if it's fragile and the content is really spot on with your project's subject matter? Then maybe you'd give it a higher priority. So keep strongly focused on your project priorities. Tackle the fragile or challenging su stuff in subsequent projects, perhaps, after you've got more experience. Um, sometimes you will have multiple items with similar content, and if that's the case, you should give preference to the items that are in better physical condition. Uh, just makes for a better uh, output for your, your users anyway. And then if you are working with a partner in a scanning center, you should be aware that many scanning centers will reserve the right to reject any item due to issues of quality or condition. They don't want to get in trouble for the damage that was caused um, to an item because of the scanning process. So uh, that would be another caveat that, yes, we think this is in the project, but the scanning center said no. Make sure your contributors are prepared for that possibility as well. Continuing in the issue of quality in your selection, you want to evaluate the clarity of images and any documents that you um, include. Um, some people will say, I've got this collection, and you might take the collection as a whole and then find out that within the collection there are some items that don't meet your quality standards. You need to um, be able to include or reject items on an individual basis as well as on a collection basis. Both of these items here um, are included in the Minnesota Digital Library's Reflections Project. The one in the upper left uh, came to us digitally in our very early days of existence, and it's a very poor quality scan. It's pixelated. It's the only image we have from this particular contributor. And nowadays, we would say, no, <laughs> this is not a high enough quality image. It's actually a disservice um, to include something that in, in our collection that is of that poor quality. And we would exclude that, even though it's a lovely picture of a no longer existent courthouse. Um, but on the lower image, we have an example of something that is damaged. So I say to be wary of damaged items that are ripped or torn or faded, et cetera, et cetera. Doesn't, I say be wary. I don't say exclude damaged items. If you look at that, the example of the lower image, it's an ox-drawn photo car on the plane somewhere, um, a particular photographer, and this item is water damaged. But this is a very unique image. Um, we don't have many images of ox-drawn mobile photography studios. <laughs> and, uh, and so even though it is damaged, there is still um, valuable information that's conveyed in a unique way by this image, and we would choose to, we did choose to include it in our collection. So you should be aware that most scanning efforts strive to capture an image of the item as close as possible to the original as, it, as you would see it in person. So most of the time, you do not use Photoshop or photo editing tools to lighten or darken an image or to, um, you know, sort of color away some damage or something. That's not the intent of a digitization project like this. Uh, it takes extra effort, and the, the intent of the project is to um, most truly represent the original. So keep that in mind as you are working with them. So items that really required that sort of effort to make them even usable would not be at the top of your selection list. And again, you might go ahead and select an item that has some condition issues. Um, if the value of the information was so great. Subject matter, it seems like an obvious uh, criteria for whether or not to include something in your digitization project. 
And once again, here I am harping on the clear project scope. It's going to give you such helpful boundaries that will help you say yes or no to um, possible content. Um, you want to, as you go looking at stuff, there's going to be so much cool content out there. You need to know when to say no. And part of that is you don't want to dilute, dilute the story you're telling in a project by including tangentially related objects. You want to have a real strong project that meets your objectives by having clear selection. Um, you should be aware that not all of the items that you'll come across, while they might be really interesting, they're not going to all be equally significant or important. And so depending on um, the criteria of your project, the significance or importance, you'll want to choose items on the higher end of the significant and important scale related to your project's objectives. One easy way to gauge interest or significance is to think about which items your patrons already used. What would they use more if they could have access to it, more ready access, or if they knew about it? Those might be some elements in there. Um, some projects are simple about, we're going to do the oldest stuff first. Well, then your, your subject matter is based on date, and that's pretty straightforward. Uh, but it's not as meaningful a story as possible um, local and historic significance. So here's an example that helps you think a little bit about subject matter. If you saw this image without the caption below, <laughs> you just saw a group of women standing somewhere, you'd have to make some guesses about who they were and what they were doing. You might say, OK, based on the landscape, it looks like they're maybe in the northern part of the United States. They're dressed warmly. There are pine trees in the background. Based on their facial features and coloring and hair and such, I might guess that perhaps they are Native Americans of some sort. Um, and they are holding sticks. And I, when we first saw this image, we didn't know what the women were doing. And we had all kinds of hypotheses. Are they um, wild? Are those sticks used to harvest wild rice? Well, usually that's done in boats. And I don't see any boats near them. Um, so we had a lot of guesses. And we actually wound up getting some researchers involved who uh, helped us discover that these women were athletes, that the sticks they are holding are sporting equipment. If you look at the woman on the right, there's a little um, thing dangling from her stick. Um, these are women who played a sport. They're Ojibwe women in Grand Portage, Minnesota, who played a sport called double ball. And it had goals that could be up to a mile apart. And they would run throwing that little dangling thing from player to player on the sticks to make a goal. So these are athletes. And the image becomes much more meaningful and tells a much bigger story as we add those layers of information. Where is it located? Who are these women? What are they doing? So the more you know about an item, um, the richer and more informative it will be for the user. And it will be, therefore, much more valuable to include it in a project. So you'll learn more about how to evaluate this and how to represent what you know in the metadata module. But it's a really important concept to keep in mind when you're selecting items. And it's especially important when you're looking at photographs or images. A book, a printed document, often has a title, an author, and a publisher. It tells you itself what it is and what it's about. And it can be searched based on words in the text and the title. A photograph doesn't have those things. And so it requires that extra description to be most fully understood. Um, also, just a note, a lot of digital collections, if you're putting your stuff into a shared collection, will have some baseline criteria of their own of which you should be aware. So for example, we will no longer accept individual studio portraits of people if we don't know who the person is. Um, initially, we maybe accepted more of them because they represented a style of dress at the time or just some information about the business of photography. Um, but you wind up with too many unidentified portraits in your collection. And so now we have a criteria that a portrait must be identified. Um, so there might be parameters like that um, related to your subject selection as well, of which you should be aware.
as you are looking through possible materials to work with, um, you, one of the criteria you are going to pay attention to is how well organized is this stuff already? Processing or organizing and describing a collection takes a whole lot of time. Uh, libraries think of it as cataloging, archives think of it as processing. It's all a matter of organizing it. Um, so be cautious. <laughs> be ready to say, no, this collection is not yet ready for scanning. It needs a lot of prep work first in just organizing and identifying the stuff that's in it. So um, it'll be a lot easier to work with a collection like the one on the right or even the one in the middle um, than the one you see on the left. And it will result in more useful metadata, more useful description that will in turn benefit the users of that material after it's been digitized. So be prepared to say, mm, great stuff, but we'll come back to it later after you've organized it or described it. There's a whole module in our training um, curriculum here on rights and access. It's a substantial, hefty one that's important for you to pay attention to. Uh, but what you know about the rights and access will impact um, what you select to include. So I have to mention it here. So you should consider these issues as you are selecting. You need to um, be clear on your institution's approach to rights management. You need to be clear on any copyright restrictions an item or a collection might bear. Um, and you are going to prefer, you're going to strive to have stuff that's as accessible to users as possible. So if you're starting with a first project, you don't want to put um, a lot of time and effort into digitizing stuff that people can look at but not use further. You want to probably prioritize a project that's going to be as open and accessible and clear to users on what they can do with that information once they see it. Um, so. Just keep this as a reminder that these are criteria to be aware of, and then think through it further when you go through the rights and access module. So this is just a list of all of the criteria that I just went through. Um, and I'm putting them all here so you can see them at once, because it's important to realize that it's not a checklist. It's not like, OK, do you, can I answer? Is this original and unique? Yes or no, check. And then I move on to the next one. They're not prioritized in order of importance or even in order of how you think about them in relation to any one item or collection. You have to approach it holistically because, um, for example, if you, as I said earlier, if you came across an image whose subject matter was so on target for your project, but it was a little bit damaged, had a torn corner, you might say the subject matter outweighs the quality issue in this one, and so I'm going to include it. Um, so you need to sort of balance and weigh all of these criteria as you're working through the assessment of any one item. So I hope that this is helpful and that you have a better sense of um, how to select from the vast array of stuff that's available for you to digitize. And I would reiterate again the preparatory work of thinking about your project scope and objectives will stand you in good stead because you need to know not only what to say yes to, what to include, you need to say, know what to say no to or what to say, oh, let's, let's hold that for the next project. Let's focus right now on this because these are our priorities and this fits our capacity and our ability um, at this point in time. So good luck, go forward, do good work, and um, there's just a reminder of all the great folks who are involved in the creation of this curriculum. Thanks very much for your time and attention. <laughs>